Hey, good morning, everyone. <laughs> Hope y'all are doing good. Uh, Ephesians 2.8, I was just looking at it. This is the verse when I was in going to church that uh, got people fired up because I was trying to explain things to them. That was before, before I knew much about Paul's writing. I was just coming into the truth of this. And it's amazing how God opens your eyes to things, you know, a little at a time. Um, you can't, you can't, <laughs> can't handle everything if you just give it up all at once, I guess. But, you know, you just get a little, you grow in this knowledge, a little at a time. And uh, so this verse in Ephesians 2, 8, this is the one that I started understanding that all mankind would be saved. Uh, because... Well, this is what it says. For in grace, through faith, are you saved. And this is not out of you. It is God's approach present. <laughs> now, at the time, <clears throat> I didn't understand what the approach present was, but I knew it was a, and they call it a gift, you know, because uh, it is God's gift to you, I think is what it said in the King James. I don't remember that. But I think I had the, the NIV at the time. <clears throat> and so I, I made him read that and I said this is you know we don't have to do this altar stuff and all that this is it says you you are saved right there it says it in Ephesians 2 8 you are saved <laughs> well <clears throat> I know that it's a process and the little the little symbols in the concordance scriptures tells us that it, it was actually saying that you are being saved. It's it's a process. This is a process that salvation is. So, anyway, <laughs> and uh, I was reading through here, and <clears throat> back when I was going to the Pentecostal church, this verse. And, it's in progress. I'm screwed up. You heard process, ain't you? Yeah. Uh, My crap was done. I ain't gonna <laughs> Uh, the verse in, in Romans 3, uh, verse 24, was one of them they used at church. It says, uh, uh, verse 23, is Romans 3, 23, says, For all sinned or wanting of the glory of God. Now, that's in the concordance. I don't know what the King James says, but, you know, they would use that. <clears throat> and show that you know we are all are, all are sinners and and you need now you need to come up and, and do the altar and repent and, but it doesn't say that so we're going to go through this ephesians 2 8 and uh, these references uh i wrote out for that but uh <clears throat> and here's how it comes out all right now these are all out of the out of paul's writings i don't go beyond paul uh, the risen christ revealed this to paul uh, at Saul at the time, but uh, Paul is our apostle for today. So here's what we got. All right, Ephesians 2 8, and these references that follow it. For in grace, through faith, are you being saved. And this is not out of you, it is God's approach present. We also, being dead to the offenses and the lust, vivifies us together in Christ. In grace, are you saved? For all sinned and are wanting of the glory of God, being justified gratuitously in His grace through the deliverance which is in Christ Jesus, whom God purposed for a propitiatory shelter, through faith in His blood, for a display of His righteousness because of the passing over of the penalties of sins which occurred before and the forbearance of God. What then shall we declare? <laughs> not that there is injustice with God. May it not be coming to that. For to Moses he is saying, I shall be merciful to whomever I may be merciful. And I shall be pitying whomever I may be pitying. Consequently then, it is not of him who is willing, nor of him who is racing, but of God the merciful. <laughs> A display, a display of the just judging of God to deem you worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are suffering also. If so be that 
It is just of God to repay afflictions to those afflicting you, and to you who are being afflicted ease with us at the unveiling of the Lord Jesus from heaven with his powerful messengers in flaming fire, dealing out vengeance to those who are not acquainted with God and those who are not obeying the evangel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall incur the justice of Eonian extermination from the face of the Lord and from the glory of his strength. <clears throat> this one, this verse here that has the Eonian extermination. Uh, I don't know what the KJV says on that, but they use that to show that, you know, you will be away from God forever in, the, in your sins. And once you get, once you die, you're messed up, you're done. You know, you're, it's the Eonian extermination. Well, the Eonian is a period of time. <clears throat> and so, and it's Eonian from the, uh, the face of the Lord. It's a period of time that you won't, uh, that God won't see you because you'll be uh, exterminated, which is a temporary <laughs> situation because all in all, God will be all in all. all none of his creation uh, will be lost. So this is a temporary situation that he's talking about here. All right. And so we'll get a, there's teachers that explain this really good. So, <clears throat> uh, but that's what that means. All right. Now, because let's get this back where we was at and, and, uh, in flaming fire, dealing out vengeance to those who are not acquainted with God and those who are not obeying the evangel of our Lord Jesus who shall incur the justice of Eonian extermination from the face of the Lord and from the glory of his strength, because by works of law, no flesh at all shall be justified in his sight, for through law is the recognition of sin. Yet now apart from law, a righteousness of God is manifest, <clears throat> being attested by the law and the prophets, yet a righteousness of God through Jesus Christ's faith for all and on all who are believing for this, there is no distinction for all sin and are wanting of the glory of God being justified gratuitously in his grace <clears throat> through the deliverance which is in Christ Jesus whom God purposed for a propitiatory shelter through faith in his blood for a display of his righteousness because the pastoral of the penalties of sins which occurred before in the forbearance of God toward the display of his righteousness in the current era for him to be just and a justifier of the one who is of the faith of Jesus. <clears throat> I turned this page. <laughs> it's stuck together. Now, to the worker, the wage is not reckoned as a favor, but as a debt. Yet to him who is not working, yet is believing on him who is justifying the irreverent, his faith is reckoned for righteousness. For if those of law are enjoyers of the allotment, faith has been made void and the promise has been nullified. For the law is producing indignation, didn't it? Now, where no law is, neither is there transgression. Therefore, it is, of the faith, it is of faith that is may accord with grace for the promise to be confirmed to the entire seed, not to those of the law only, but to those also of the faith of Abraham, who is father of us all. <clears throat> for to Moses, for Moses is writing of the righteousness which is of law, that a man who does the same shall be living in it. Yet the righteousness of faith is saying thus, you may not be saying in your heart, who will be ascending into heaven? That is, to be leading Christ down. Or who will be descending into the submerged chaos? That is, to be leading Christ up from among the dead. But what is it saying? Near you is a declaration in your mouth and in your heart. That is, uh, declaration of faith which that 
that is the declaration of faith which we are heralding that if ever you should be avowing with your mouth the declaration that Jesus is Lord and should be believing in your heart that God rouses him from among the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart it is believed for righteousness, yet with the mouth it is avowed for salvation. <clears throat> I know that scripture tells us that God gives us each a portion. You know, we all have a portion of faith. So this is given to us in a period of time. Now, that in law no one is being justified with God is evident. For the just one by faith shall be living. Now the law is not of faith, but who does them shall be living in them. Christ reclaims us from the curse of the law, becoming a curse for our sake. For it is written, Accursed is everyone hanging on a pole, that the blessing of Abraham may be coming to the nations in Christ Jesus, that we may be obtaining the promise of the Spirit through faith. Is the law then against the promise of God? May it not be coming to that. For if a law were given that is able to vivify, really righteousness were out of law. But the scripture locks up all together under sin, that the promise out of Jesus Christ's faith may be given to those who are believing. Now, before the coming of faith, <clears throat> we were gar garrisoned under the law, being locked up together for the faith about to be revealed. Among whom we also all behaved ourselves once in the lust of our flesh, doing the will of the flesh and of the comprehension, and were in our nature children of indignation, even as the rest. Yet God, <laughs> being rich in mercy because of his vast love with which he loves us, we also being dead to the offenses and the lust, vivifies us together in Christ and grace are you being saved and rouses us together and seats us together among the celestials in Christ Jesus that in the oncoming eons he should be displaying the transcendent riches of his grace in his kindness to us in Christ. <laughs> For in grace through faith are you saved? And this is not of you. It is God's approach present, not of works, lest anyone should be boasting. For his achievements, his achievements are we, being created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God makes ready beforehand that we should be walking in them. <laughs> that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may be giving you a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the realization of him, the eyes of your heart having been enlightened, for you to perceive what is the expectation of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of the enjoyment of his allotment among the saints, and what the transcendent greatness of his power for us who are believing, in accord with the operation of the might of his strength. <laughs> it shows right there, it's all God, it's not on anything we do. <laughs> How then should they be evoking one in whom they do not believe? Yet how should they be believing one of whom they do not hear? Yet how should they be hearing apart from heralding? How should they be heralding if ever they should not be commissioned? According as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those bringing an evangel of good. But not all obey the evangel. For as Isaiah is saying, Lord, who believes our tidings? Consequently, faith is out of tiding, yet the tiding through a declaration of Christ. But I am saying, do they not hear it all? To be sure, and the entire earth came out their utterance, and into the ends of the, uh, of the inhabited earth their declarations. Only be citizens walking worthily, of the evangel of Christ, that whether coming and making your acquaintance or being absent, I should be hearing of your concerns, that you are standing firm in one spirit, one soul, competing together in the faith of the evangel, and not being startled by those who are opposing in anything, which is 
to them a proof of destruction. Yet for your salvation, and this is from God, for, for to you it is graciously granted for Christ's sake, not only to be believing on him, but to be suffering for his sake also. Beware that no one shall be despoiling you through philosophy and empty seduction. In accord with the human tradition, in accord with the elements of the world, and not in accord with Christ. For in him the entire complement of the deity is dwelling bodily, and you are complete in him, who is the head of every sovereignty and authority, in whom you were circumcised also, with the circumcision <clears throat> with a circumcision not made by hands, in the stripping off of the body of flesh in the circumcision of Christ, being entombed together with him in baptism, in whom you were roused together also through faith in the operation of God, who rouses him from among the dead, you also being dead to the offenses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he vivifies us together jointly with him, dealing graciously with all our offenses, erasing the handwriting of the decrees against us, which was hostile to us, and takes it away, takes it away <clears throat> out of the mist, nailing it to the cross, stripping off the sovereignties and authorities with boldness. He makes a show of, of them triumphing over them in it. <laughs> Can't add to that. That's the references to Ephesians 2 and verse 8. Wow. <laughs> There's some so much good stuff in, in uh, Paul's letters. You know, we get it and, and look through them. And these references just really pull things together, which is pretty awesome. So, anyway, it's time to get up and get the day started. You got anything you want to add today? No. Nothing? Nothing. Our coffee's done. It's time to get a cup of coffee and uh, see what God's got for us. You all ready? <laughs> I think we are. Getting up and getting around. So, hope you all have an awesome day. Marsh and I love you and we appreciate you hanging out. Yeah, we do. We do. So, grace and peace to you all and love. And we'll talk to you all tomorrow. See you then. Have an awesome day.